with flowers and colourful pictures on the walls, toys on the tables. In many ways, this is like an ordinary class, and the pupils behind me here are in the middle of a maths class. But what makes this different is that we're underground. Those are the extractor fans of the Kharkiv metro. And in fact, this is one of five underground schools in this city, because this city is facing continues to face the daily bombardment of Russia's missiles and drones. And so the pupils here have to live, will have to, will have to study underground because the risk of being above ground is too great. Again, more signs of normal school, catch mats, colorful posters, toys for the pupils to play with. But in fact, this is an underground platform. This used to be a busy station in the Kharkiv metro and behind these walls here, which have only been temporarily erected, in fact, the trains are still running. The Kharkiv metro is running. You might even be able to hear the sound of a train passing as I'm speaking. This is the new reality for people in this city, Ukraine's second city, parts of life school, normal life, education has moved underground because that's the safest way for pupils to learn away from, or at least protected temporarily while they're here, from the risk of the Russian bombardments. It is really remarkable to see the way, not just here in Kharkiv, but across Ukraine, the way that people have adapted to their new reality. And this is just one of the ways, but not every city can do this, not every city has a metro like Kharkiv's where pupils can learn with spaces big enough for pupils to learn. Kharkiv is, in that sense, slightly unique. It's Ukraine's second biggest city. It has a uh, really well-established uh, metro, but it's also so close to the Russian border that it has continued to face one of the most devastating onslaughts of missiles uh, drones, rockets and artillery shells since the very first day of the war when you may remember it repelled a Russian tank assault and from that point onwards it really has been on the front line. Russian forces drove into the city. I was here two years ago when special forces drove right into the city. It was astonishing. Um, but they were then pushed out to the city's edges. They were then pushed out and pushed further back and by the end of 2022, the first year of the war, Russian forces had been forced to retreat from the city and at that point it was no longer in range of some of Russia's guns but it continues to be in range uh, of weapons such as the S-300 missile system which is repeatedly used to attack the city. <laughs> It's also worth noting that next to the normal paraphernalia of a school, even a school underground, there's another sign that this is a country at war. And these are the posters like this one, reminding people not to touch what may be mines or unexploded ordnance that's been scattered around the city, the countryside, their homes in these two years of bombardments that they've endured.